Now we're going to move farther down on the periodic table and see how we can find the core notation for some of the heavier elements. In the previous video, part 2, we developed this periodic table showing the endings of configurations for elements in periods 1 to 5. If we have a look at the top two groups of orbitals on the electron energy level diagram, we see that there's a group of seven orbitals called the 4f orbitals, and another group of seven orbitals called the 5f orbitals. There are seven orbitals in the 4f group, and since each orbital holds two electrons, this group of 4f orbitals can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. The 14 elements that gradually fill up the 4f orbitals are this group on the periodic table, shown as a row near the bottom, separated from the rest of the table. These are called the lanthanide group of elements. And the 14 elements which fill up the 7 5f orbitals are in this row, and they're called the actinides. Even though we could use this periodic table to predict configurations for the actinide and lanthanide elements, in reality, there are many exceptions to the rules that are laid out here. The only way to find the actual configurations for these is to look them up in a reliable reference. Elements in the main body of the periodic table generally have configurations that are somewhat more predictable. For example, let's say we're asked to do the noble gas core configuration for lead, element 82. I think you can see that doing a complete expanded configuration of lead would be really tedious. We start with the noble gas just before lead on the periodic table, which is xenon with 54 electrons. So we start by writing Xe in square brackets here. Because we're in period 6, the outer s electrons are in the 6s orbital, so we write 6s too. Next we add 4f14, which are filled after the 6s. The reason it goes from barium straight to the 4f orbitals and skips lanthanum is beyond the scope of this course, so we won't worry about this here. We've now accounted for 54 plus 2 plus 14, which is a total of 70 electrons. After the 4f's are filled up, we proceed to the d orbitals. Remember the d orbitals are always one less than the period number, so the d orbitals in period 6 are the 5d's and they hold a total of 10 electrons. So we show this by writing 5d10 here. Adding the 5d10 brings us to a total of 80 electrons. The group of p orbitals in period 6 are the 6p orbitals. And since lead is the second element in the 6p group of orbitals, its configuration ends in 6p2. So we finish lead's configuration by writing 6p2 here. Adding these last two electrons now gives us a grand total of 82 electrons, the number of electrons in a neutral atom of lead. So this is now the core notation for lead. Now even though 6s orbital is lower in energy than the 6p orbitals, frequently this configuration is written with the 6p2 and the 6s2 together, like this. Both of these core notations for lead are considered correct in Chemistry 11.